Chapter 51 For the rest of the day I remained in the hiding place, thinking. In doing so I continued to piece together the fragmentary bits of my life and place them together until they became a mosaic. I kept asking myself if I felt different, if I was different. The answer was always yes. I was no longer nothing. I had become two people, Lord Furnival's son and Crispin. How odd, I thought. It had taken my mother's death, Father Quinnell's murder, and the desire of others to kill me to claim a life of my own. But what kind of life? I suppose some might have considered me blessed in that I was of high blood, but I knew that blood, as Widow Daventry had said, to be nothing but venom. That Lord Furnival was my father had been but a cruel burden. Bear, in the short time I had known him, was a thousandfold a more faithful father to me. For the first time I began to think upon John Ball's words. They made sense. For what I recalled, most was his saying that no man or woman either shall be enslaved to any other, but stand free and equal to one another. I recalled, too, what Bear had told me, that he was a fool because he should like to be in heaven before he died. I saw it then. Bear and Ball were talking about the very word Father Quinnell had used, freedom, something I had never had, nor did anyone in my village or any other villages we had passed through. We lived in bondage. To be a Furnival was to be a part of that bondage. As time passed in the darkness of my hiding place, the one thing I knew for sure was that as Bear had helped to free me, he had given me life. Therefore, I resolved to help free him, even if it cost me that new life to do so.